Master Tavern Keeper's History of the Old World. And so, Master Tavern Keeper, finding yourself and your companions confronted by a herd of radiant pegasi, what did you do? Ah, well, it was morning. And uh, although I am sure you two are aware, Heinrich and Cedric, for the neophyte's benefit, it is worth emphasizing that the radiant pegasus is especially dangerous after it has been basking in the morning sun. Its power is at its zenith, and it is able to burn any enemy that comes near with a powerful blaze. But uh, to answer your question, Heinrich, what did I do? Why, sweet nothing. Our guide, the Arabian witch Zarka, was a completely different matter, though. Safe spotted us. Quickly, Fadi. The horn. Bring out the horn of jackals. I saw her grandson, Fadi, immediately pull out a very ancient looking horn from one of the pair's travel bags and hand it to his forebear. It was an old wooden thing upon which crude depictions of canine beasts had been etched. Don't just look at it. I know it's pretty, but blow it already. And with this reprimand, he stood up, moved to the fore of the caravan, raised it high, and blew into it with all his might. There was a sudden bang-rip sound, like the skin of a large drum breaking and tearing, and then, out of nowhere, a quintet of unnaturally large, ethereal jackals ran past our caravan towards the herd of Pegasi. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, these creatures were head and shoulders bigger than the common jackal you normally find in Araby. Oh, so you're saying that these uh, predators are common in the country? Ah, yes, indeed. Desperate packs of jackals are to a penny in the Atalan Mountains, as well as uh, roaming the deserts in no small numbers. In fact, so common are they that some have even been domesticated, being kept as pets as well as being uh, used for racing. Anyway, it was a magical version that now faced off against the Pegasi, not your regular run-of-the-mill jackal. The lead canine immediately charged towards the nearest and largest Pegasus, a beast that appeared to be the alpha male. The Pegasus reared up on its hind legs, stretching out its wings as it did so. The great wingspan cast a shadow over the charging jackal, but it was a shadow that was soon banished by a blinding discharge of Haitian energy from the empowered creature. The searing light entirely engulfed the magical conjuration and vaporized it without leaving a trace. However, the Alpha continued its ascent, and the rest of the herd soon followed his lead, rearing up and taking to the sky. However, the other jackals met similar ends at the hands of the retreating radiant pegasi, but the sight of the herd leaving 
gave those of us in the caravan an immeasurable amount of relief. The way ahead was clear and we were free to continue our journey. Och, what an encounter. But uh, I'm guessing then it was a uh, plain sailing from here on in then. Oh, no, no, no. Not on your Nelly Duff, as we say in Caraburg. That said, we did trundle on, quickly making our way to the far side of the plateau without further incident. From here, the old road again began to rise as it ran around the upper slopes of the mountains that lay to our north. But uh, we had little choice but to follow this road, despite the threat of potential rock slides looming high above us to the left and precipices and sheer drops to the right. Yet, onwards we went, balanced precariously on the knife's edge between the two and, in this way, slowly worked our way northwards. Eventually, our ascent came to a halt and the road levelled out. We were high up, the air was cold and thin, and as the sun began to set, we began to shiver. Apart from uh, Hassan, that is. He just sat there, eating his way through our supplies. Fortunately for uh, Ludwig and myself, once more, Zarka and her grandson had come prepared, and out came half a dozen or more fur skins, some uh, having once belonged to the wild lions that prowl the land, whilst others from the giant wolves that stalk the mountains. The night was thankfully most uneventful, and we were grateful for the chance to sleep. But the next dawn brought danger once more. As the sun rose and the air began to warm up, distantly, Ludwig's keen halfling eyes spotted a dark black silhouette swirling high above us that he pointed out to me. What have you spotted? Hmm, looks like a carrion bird. Not too far away, I'd say. Ah, no, Septimus. I think your uh, long shank eyes are playing tricks on you. It is still quite distant yet. I've no doubt it looks closer, because it is in fact massive. I immediately alerted Faddy, and he was quick to identify it. It is a giant vulture. They are enormous birds easily capable of lifting and carrying off a camel and its rider between their talons. They infest these mountains. We are in trouble if it sets its sights on us. Then we are in trouble, for it is coming this way. And so it was. But once again, our guides had the answer. Zarka stood up from where she had been sat at the front of the caravan, raised her arms high and began to chant. Hamadan easy fat Ramalia Himayatina. 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 I felt the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end and the air thrummed with pregnant power. And then, and then came the wind, a moat of the great Arabian wind 
Halamathan, and in its arms it bore giant fistfuls of biting, blinding sand. The giant vulture was almost upon us by this point, swooping down, its claws outstretched. But before it was able to tear into us, the sandstorm that Zarka had conjured engulfed it completely. Spinning it about, hither and thither, before upending it and hurling it into the rocky ground behind us, breaking one of its massive wings. But, despite this mauling, it still lived. Unsteadily, it tottered to its clawed feet before glaring at us with an evil gaze. It clearly intended to make a meal of our party, and, fighting against the power of the wind as it did so, it slowly began to make its way towards the caravan. <laughs> But now, it was our turn to act, or rather, Ludwig's, and not exactly act, rather order his ogre. Hassan, chop! And with a grunt, he stood, pulling up his great bronze blade and stomping out of the back of the caravan. Ludwig and I followed him to the back of our conveyance watching as he lumbered into the sandstorm towards the wounded vulture, soon becoming nothing more than a dark silhouette in a raging miasma of sand. What have you done, Brambledown? You've sent him to his death. I would not be so certain about that dear Septimus. And, as was so often the case, the halfling was right, for as we watched, a distant roar came from amidst the winds. Hassan, chop! And, before our very eyes, he lopped off the head of the giant vulture. And, exactly the same moment, Zarka, who was stood behind us, still chanting, suddenly stopped and collapsed to the ground, spent and exhausted. My goodness, Master Tavernkeeper, what an encounter. You were very lucky. Well, I am a follower of Ranald. Good luck comes with the territory. We can also count ourselves Lucky that these were the only beasts that we butted heads against. For example, there are far worse in the uh, lower part of the country, the, uh, the area bordering the jungles of the Southlands. Ach, do you mean the realm of the Lizardmen down that way? I do indeed. And much as in Lustria, the greenery of the southern canopies provides shade for many a creature many of whom also frequent the nearby dunes of the desert. Well, to start with, you've the more common animals, such as the elephants that roam the south. Ah, oh, in particular, the plain of Tuscus. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where the dragons go to die. Ah, no, 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 no. That's the plain of bones, out over in the east, near the lands of the uh, Chaos Dwarves, and stretching down to the Sea of Dread. A uh, topic for another day. The Plain of Tuskers is the principal area where the sorcerers and hunters of Araby go to catch elephants to be used in their armies, much as they also stalk the Atalan Mountains to ensnare giant vultures to likewise do the same. Oh, yeah, I see. <laughs> uh, my mistake. Ah, uh, no, 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 it's fine. But it's uh, not just elephants down there. 
You also get tribes of powerful, great apes who prowl the leafy boondocks, as we used to call the jungle in Skeggy. And, uh, well, only one, a single one, of these dangerous beasts can tear a man in half with their bare hands. So you can imagine the slaughter when a whole tribe goes on the rampage. Ugh, you most certainly can. But you said that these were the more common beasts. What about the rarer creatures of that particular region? Well, for one, you get immense giant serpents and monstrous lizards. These uh, definitely fall into the rare category and are most sought after by the uh, numerous collectors of strange creatures, such as the uh, Sultan of Martek, whose private zoo we uh, touched on earlier. But it's not just in the jungles that you find terrifying beasts. Much as in your own motherland of Albion, Master Alchemist, the World's Edge Mountains are the home to isolated warbands of giants. Oh yes, and uh, you can even find dragons secreted away amongst the peaks and uh, hidden in the uh, jungles of the south as well. Although, uh, to be honest, most are asleep within deep hidden caverns. No doubt uh, dreaming of when our fated place was a much colder and less hospitable sphere than it is now. Ach, that's fascinating. But uh, when I think of Araby, I'm not picturing mountains and jungles. I'm seeing deserts in my mind's eye. Ah, as well you should. The deserts too have their creatures, but they are on a much smaller scale. But this does not make them any less sought after. However, it is not the creature itself the hunters want. Rather, it is the venoms that they so often possess. The Deathstalker scorpion that we spoke of earlier obviously has one of the most deadly poisons known, but far more commonly used to lace the blades of many an Arabian warrior is the venom of the green scorpion, or that of the deadly black speckled vipers, colloquially known as the viper's kiss. Ah, uh, and another yet comes from the tomb scarabs, found in and around the sepulchres of the ancient lords of Neagara. This has a uh, slightly different use, though. Oh, yeah, and uh, I think I know this one. Are you referring to the methods by which you can uh, hunt vampires, perchance? I was indeed. How did, how did you know? Oh, yeah, well, actually, I saw my father... Jürgen Lewin, make von Vons. I, uh, uh, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. As I mentioned before, my father started out as a uh, mercenary working in and around Tailia here. But uh, after the death of my mother and the macabre events, both leading to and surrounding that, and uh, don't even bother to ask, I have in no way had enough to drink to start talking about all that. But uh, suffice to say, my father became a vampire hunter. So we saw what I saw was this. He had a small file labelled Tomb Scarab Poison. He had already prepared the thigh bone of an undead skeleton he had previously defeated by uh, dangling it from a rope like the uh, pendulum of a clock. He allowed a single drop to fall onto the bone and it began to swing wildly before suddenly becoming fixed in a single direction from which it would not waver. It was pointing the way to the nearest vampire, according to Papa. Ah yes, it is used by the vampire hunters of Araby in exactly the same way. Of course though, you have to be uh, careful around the pendulum, as the tomb scarab poison never loses its effectiveness. Even a single drop can be fatal. Ach. Much like the one famous poison from Araby that I've had some experience with then. The, uh, the Black Lotus. Ah, yes, indeed. That grows in the, uh, in the Black Plains, in the, uh, in the south of the country. But, uh, your tail has slipped away from us, Master Tavernkeeper. What happened after your encounter with the, uh, giant vulture? Ah, thank you for reminding me. Well, we went out to see the triumphant Hassan, only to find him in amongst the remains of the carcass of the dead bird, ripping out handfuls of dead flesh and gorging himself on them. 
And, uh, as you would expect, no amount of cajoling would get him to leave. So, uh, in the end, we left him there. And, for all I know, he is still up there in the mountains, hunting the fauna of Araby. And no doubt, getting bigger and bigger by the year. <laughs>